Well, I'm talking with Sally Ann now from the Public Media Alliance. What are they? Who are they? Well, let's find out now as we, we join them. Um, this, the story is about Manx Radio and public service broadcasting on the Isle of Man. Tell us what your concerns are, please. Well, we are the largest global association of public broadcasters, public media organisations, because now most tend to be multi-platform, not just broadcasting. And uh, we've been following what, what's been happening in the Isle of Man very closely. Um, I read the um, Select Committee report from Tinwald, which was published, I think, on the 8th of November. And there were just a number of paragraphs which really um, leapt out at me with, with, with some concern um, in that we really um, regard that there are some things about public media. If you're calling yourself public media, if you want to have a public media organization are non-movable. They're, they're really things that aren't up for debate. Um, and we see this happening around the world where originally people understood, politicians understood that public media had to be independent of government. Sometimes, very often in fact, the government collects the funding for public media, but it doesn't get involved in the management, the strategic direction. It, 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 it understands that Independence is what builds public trust in the media. And we know, sadly, worldwide, there's a, a, a decline in trust in, in the media worldwide at the moment. This is the potential that the government could say, we don't like you doing that, don't do it. Is that what you say? Yes. And I think, you know, public media is there for, um, to, you know, like all good journalism, to scrutinise and call power to account. Now, we hope power doesn't need too much calling to account, but it's it's really um, this fourth estate is that is a really important role for media, specifically public media. And when you see lines um, like, uh, although in principle a public service broadcaster should be operationally independent of government, well, you know, I, I, that's not just principle. That has to be practice. It has to be at arm's length. If it's not at arm's length, it becomes state broadcasting. And that's what China does. Uh, and there has been criticism that Manx Radio is a state broadcaster in its own way. They probably can't win here because they, you know, they, they, by taking money from the government, they're always, well, not always, but sometimes it can assume that they are getting a, you know, a slightly easier ride than if they're completely independent. Do you not think a complete separation would be even better, completely and utterly, that Manx Radio was funded by the BBC or BBC took it over or something like that? No, I mean, I think because um, the Isle of Man is independent, the, the situation vis-a-vis -vis the BBC is a complex one. Obviously, there's some comparisons with Channel Islands and other, other similar. But I think this is separate from that. Um, it is how the public media organisation, whether it's Manx Radio, whether it's a new one, whatever it is, it's how it's governed. And is that governance ensuring that there's separation so that there's no editorial interference so that it's editorially in, independent now i guess if you're if you're somewhere where the, the population is smaller then people know one another there's the temptation to lift the phone and complain you know in the uk uh, politicians i am sure phone and complain about the bbc but it's making sure that there isn't any day-to-day -day interference and that you go yep fine i'm hearing you but actually we're independent and we run this in the way that we as trained journalists run it to keep it independent now what's quite interesting is very often the government might collect the money so the bbc is unusual or, or less uh, it's less common now to have a direct license fee that's ideal because it ke keeps a direct relationship between those paying and the media organization Although with what's happened with the over 75 licenses, we see that, again, it gets complicated. So the fact that the government collects the money and then says this is what we will give for public media, public broadcasting, isn't unusual. What is unusual and what is very unusual is to see a line in a document coming out of a parliament which says, although in principle a public service broadcaster should be operationally independent of government, the arm's length approach of, in this case, the Treasury has not worked. Well, you, if it's not arm length, it doesn't yeah. work. It's not public media. You, you brought up the channel lines, and this is the problematical thing here about, again, you know, who should fund this, the, the public service broadcasting, I suppose. The BBC takes money for the licence fee, but doesn't give anywhere near the same service and uh, output as it does in the channel lines. You do not concur that that's probably where there's still a problematical thing, that the other man seems to be paying twice for public service broadcasting on this. Um, I, 
I think that's that's a debatable argument. I, I can understand some of the concerns that there is a sense of pain twice, although I suspect most people in the Isle of Man actually watch BBC programmes and have access to all BBC channels on Freeview um, in terms of television and have access to all BBC radio. So they do get what they're paying for from the BBC in that sense. And I, I, I do understand there's more complexity in that. Uh, but and, you, and so Manx Radio is, is a member of your group. It says on your website, a long-standing member. Therefore, yes, have, is. Uh, is, is there a slight, slight bias or pressure that you are making this statement? I mean, you know, because you're standing up for one of your members almost. Uh, well, as an association members, we represent our members worldwide. Um, but we also are invited by governments. Um, I gave evidence to Tinwald some years back. Um, I think during the first review stage, I was called to give evidence and I gladly did that. Um, no, I, I mean, I can only say that this is something we would do every week. The team who sit in the UK look at public media worldwide and see where there is any sort of threat to its independence. And um, just a couple of weeks ago, we've been watching what's happening in the pilot, uh, Isle of Man and we saw this document and we are concerned about it. What are you going to but do about it? We will be writing. Uh, we all have already written um, a piece for our own website. We'll be writing to members of Tinwald in the next couple of days um, and to um, elsewhere in the UK. And we will be pointing out that some of the points in that document mean that um, it, it is of concern that there is no longer independence in terms of the, of the public media if this goes ahead. Uh, and are you and, therefore surprised by reading the actual report, which I haven't even had a chance to read the whole thing yet, it's, it's, it's quite lengthy, uh, that, it, it, do you feel there's no support or lacking in support for the national station, national radio station? Yeah, I, I do, really. And, and I think to go back to your comment about paying twice, um, I, I, just am, I just think if you are operating as a nation and you want something that represents the Isle of Man viewpoint and um, which is a platform for dialogue in the Isle of Man, civil dialogue, we know social media isn't always very civil, then funding your own public media organisation, whatever that is, whether that becomes radio and TV or multi-platform or just Manx Radio, <coughs> excuse me, that is what public media is. So that's not a matter really really overlapping with the BBC issue. That is something which, as an independent government, if you want it, you fund it, but you ensure that it is governed independently. So it's a, it's a very simple line. Otherwise, it becomes state media.